What's going on guys? My name is Fatness, and today I am bringing you a brand new Destiny video. Now before we get into the meaty part of the video, I want to say this real quick. As you can see in the gameplay in the background, I went to the lighthouse, which means I went flawless in the Trials of Osiris. This personally for me is a big achievement because I am not the best Crucible player out there. Not only do I not play Crucible that often, I haven't played Trials of Osiris since about the very beginning of the Taken King, which, of course, that was like about a year ago. So, at the very start of the Taken King, I played Trials, but I didn't really stick with it very much because simply of the skill-based matchmaking. So, this is a big deal for me. Uh, as you can see, my rewards up here are the Doctrine of Passing. It's got a very, very, very sweet roll on it with Counterbalance and Small Bore, as well as Braced Frame. Uh, I really like this this gun. It's the sleek black look, which is nicely done. Uh, it will replace my old Doctrine of Passing, which is yellow. I also got the Bassett's Dream, egg, uh, not exotic, um, legendary emblem. And then I also got the Pariah Gloves, which I thought was really, really awesome. Which is a big thing for me. You're probably wondering, why am I discussing about Trials of Osiris? What does that have to do with my video? Well, it has to do with this. I got those two new items, the, the Adept version of the Doctrine of Passing, and the Pariah Gloves. Uh, I want to keep those because those are trophies of my accomplishment from Year 2 Trials, which is something that's very difficult for me, and it's a, it's a trophy. They're basically my trophies that I have, so I don't want to get rid of them. The problem is, is I'm running out of room in my vault, and that's what we're going to be discussing today. How to clear up your vault space. So in the background, you can see I'm in my weapons. I'm doing weapons first. I have all of my raid weapons, Vault of Glass, Crota's End, King's Fall. I even have the Prison of Elders weapons in there as well. Uh, that I'll discuss here in just about a minute, but I have all of those set because those are some of the most difficult weapons to get. Not necessarily King's Fall, but the Vault of Glass and Crota's End. Some of those weapons you have a 0.5% chance of even getting. Uh, not only that, but I also have a one of the rarest guns in Destiny, the Solar Burn Dregs, uh, whatever that hand cannon was called. Uh, there was only one other hand cannon that has solar, and that was the Jewel of Osiris back in year one. But I also have a whole bunch of other different random weapons. Um, the first full page was fully in, in um, wholly only, uh, what are they called, uh, raid exclusives. Because I want to hold on to those because some of those are very difficult to get, and I can't easily access those again without spending another two years to get. And please, let me make a note on this one. I just finished my entire raid collection, armor and weapons included, a little over three weeks ago. And that's been about two years since Destiny came out. That's a long time to try to get everything, and I'm a collector. So this is the, this is, this is the guide for those that, you know, collect weapons and stuff. So first off, I want to say I have a bunch of duplicate items in here. I've got two of, like, the same different machine guns, two pairs of different machine guns that are the same. I've got a whole bunch of scout rifles and pulse rifles and snipers that I have that are all the same. Uh, some of the scout rifles and pulse rifles are of the same archetype with different perks on them. So I decided to, what I what I decided to do is I went in, I chose the perks that I personally love the most, god rolls, so to speak. And so I'm holding on to those god rolls simply because I know those are the weapons I need. Those are the weapons I want to use. There are some weapons like the snipers. I have a whole bunch of different sniper flavors, arc, solar, void. Uh, I only need a only a couple of those, and since a lot of these weapons I really don't use except for a very, very small hand few, that made it really easy to single out the weapons that I don't use. Just because I like collecting everything doesn't mean I necessarily meet, need everything. If it's stuff that I can easily get, I probably won't keep it. Simply because I can easily have access to that weapon. For, for, for example, some of the Vanguard packages, like the Longbow Synthesis, uh, I've been getting a lot of those from the Crucible Vendor. And since it's an easier item to get, aside from the, you know, raid weapons, I'm going to go ahead and dismantle that one, because I don't need that. I've already got two other solar snipers, which is like the LDRs, and I also have the Irenes with Luck in the Chamber. Which, you might not see those, the, the Irenes, in this video. I had them on some other characters. But a great rule of thumb to dismantling and keeping items in your vault or on your characters is this. If you have multiple of the same weapons with different perks on them, find the roles that you prefer the most and keep those weapons. And then get rid of everything else. 
if they are the same archetype of weapon as some of your other really good rolls, you might not need those. Or if they are very easily obtainable, you may not need those either. So those are some easy things you can dismantle. You only need really one of each flavor of archetype of weapons. So like, for example, machine guns, I have a bunch of arc and void and solar machine guns. However, there's very few perks on each of those machine guns that I like. So I'm going to keep the ones that I like and the ones that I don't really need that are just duplicates of, you know, like the zombie apocalypse. I have a solar and an arc one. Well, the solar one has better perks than the arc one, and I have a really good, you know, high-impact arc machine gun. I'm just going to get rid of that other zombie apocalypse because I don't need it. It's not one of those weapons that I absolutely direly need. And the same goes for armor, but I'll go over armor here just a, here just a little bit. And you're pro there's pro probably one other thing you guys are wondering are, why am I dismantling all these items? Shouldn't I save all these, you know, legendaries that I'm going to dismantle to clear up vault space for when the Rise of Iron comes so I can have a ton of legendary marks? And so there's just no reason to really worry about, hey, you know, I got tons of legendary marks on, and, you know, just I have all this stuff that I need. There's a, that ends up being a double-edged sword in a way. No pun intended. Because here's the deal. Those items that you currently have in your vault, that takes up space. Yes, you can get tons of legendary marks from them. However, holding on to those weapons and armors decreases the amount of space that you can hold engrams for. And if last year was any indication, and as well as some of the things that Bungie has said for the Rise of Iron upcoming, blues and legendaries and exotics are all going to be useful again. So you're going to be able to infuse all kinds of different stuff in there. So the reason why I'm clearing out my vault space, getting rid of items that I don't need or don't want, is because I'll put engrams in their place. Legendary engrams and exotic engrams. Now, yes, you're not going to have as many legendary marks because you've dismantled some of them. However, if those legendary engrams do not decrypt at higher light levels or even at year three levels, you can still dismantle all of those for legendary marks. So it's basically a best of both worlds. It'll either decrypt into a higher light level that you can infuse into your current armors or whatever, or you can just dismantle them for legendary marks. Same goes for exotics. You can just dismantle those for exotic shards. So really, it's, it's kind of a catch-22, so you can decide whether you want to hold on to those weapons that you don't need or armors you don't want, or you can dismantle them and hold on to the engrams and everything, legendaries, exotics, I kind of prefer to pr prioritize exotics over legendaries because legendaries in year two, they had a lower light value than the blues, which I thought was kind of odd, but that's not that big of a deal. Another thing is for the armors, you'll probably might, you might still have like some masks from the uh, Festival of the Lost. I would highly suggest you keep a couple of those masks if they're their absolute favorites and then just dismantle the rest of them. Because Bungie did confirm that the Festival of the Lost will be coming in October, as well as bringing entirely new masks and everything. I assume they're going to be having the old masks as well, but just additional new ones as well, which is going to be awesome. Another thing is, is that the Prison of Elder Gears, whether it be Year 1 or Year 2 Prison of Elders, they are all very, very, very easily obtained. So I would suggest go ahead and deleting all of your Prison of Elders armor. You can also dismantle the weapons, unless you have like a special roll on a hand cannon or something like that, because that's like a very, very rare deal that's hardly able to be gotten. But the easiest way to get to Prison of Elders gears for year one is run the 28 Prison of Elders. I have gotten probably multiple sets running that Prison of Elders 28 level, uh, and just a few runs, like different full sets of gear. So it's very easy to obtain, including the weapons. And if need be, I will be dismantling some of those other Prison of Elders weapons, but probably not. My point is that there's a lot of gear out there that you can hold on to, and a lot of the gear that you can dismantle. Uh, as far as the Trials of Osiris gear, um, that's going to be up to you if you use some of, some of that gear the most. Like certain armored pieces in your two, if you use those the most, hold on to those pieces. Don't dismantle those to make room. Because it could be those have tier 12 stats, or it could just be some very, very special armor for you, like the Pariah gear for me. Another thing is class items. Bungie did also confirm that all the class items ever launched with Destiny will be coming with the Rise of Iron, except for the Raid P. Uh, Saladin will also be selling Iron Engrams, if I remember those correctly, that will, be that will contain um, Rise of, not Rise of Iron, uh, Iron, uh, Iron Banner gear that happened from year one all the way up through this current year two. So you can also dismantle some of those 
class items, and that will also make up for, for some space for you. As far as artifacts go, if you like the artifacts, you can keep them. If you don't like them, then you can just dismantle on them. Those are pretty much up in the air. Uh, another thing is, for Vault Space, exotics. If you don't use hardly any exotics, um, the Touch of Malice, Black Spindle, if you have those, uh, or even Zalo Supercell or Mida, some of your most used exotics you can hold on to, but the exotics that you don't really use, like um, if you have like an Icebreaker, or an old Year One Gallahorn, or even, you know, like Red Death, or just any exotics that you don't really use, go ahead and dismantle those. You'll be able to make up a whole bunch of room for them, as well as be able to put exotic engrams in their place in order to have a bunch of them in your vault and on your, you know, character person. Keep in mind, guys, we are less than two weeks away from the Rise of Iron, and this week is going to be highly encouraged that you grind the Heroic Strikes or grind the Crucible or whatever you're, you prefer to grind for. Go get those engrams. Go use your three of coins. Stock up on those exotics. Stock up on those legendaries. Throw them in your vault. Now is the final stages of preparation for Rise of Iron if you're going to prepare, especially if you're going to be going for, <clears throat> excuse me, the world's first on the raid on September 23rd. So guys, that's about it for my vault clearing space. You can do these tips if you want to, but you don't have to. Just kind of go through your items, find what you absolutely need and what you want to keep. If they have, you know, special sentimental value for you, like the raid gear, uh, hold on to those until Bungie either gives us extra vault space or if they give us a kiosk for it, uh, which we don't know anything about that yet, but we do know that Vault Space will be coming, or some sort of solution to Vault Space will be coming sometime after the launch of the Rise of Iron. Well, that's about the gist of all this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions for me, be sure to leave it as a comment below. Also, like this video if you found any of these tips helpful for you. And you can also hit that subscribe button. We're getting close to 75 subscribers, which I'm, I'm a, totally blown away by all the support you guys have given me. Uh, my goal is to get 75 by the end of the year, uh, and I think we might end up making that, but we'll just have to see. Thank you guys again for watching, and I hope you really enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys next time.